<laughs> You're recording. Hello. Hi. Hey. What's up? Action. Hello there. This is Dawn from RuPaul's Drag Race season 16, and I'm here to talk to you about my promo look. Hi. Hello. Um editor Don speaking. I filmed this so long ago and then got so busy. Um, and so I know we're like five episodes in now, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. And you're gonna love it. Here she is, here she is. Hung her up, made a little set, you know? Skitty says hi. I have assembled here all of the pieces of my promo look. We have the headpiece, we have the hair. It needs a brush, I don't have a brush here. We have the information, we have the pieces, and we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about the promo look. We're gonna answer questions. I'm gonna tell you about who made it. I'm gonna tell you about why I made it. I'm gonna tell you about inspirations I had, the sketching designing process. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk about all of it. So first things first, we're gonna talk about my design process for this look, okay? So there were many, many iterations of this design because I knew that it was going to be the look that followed me for my entire career, like throughout Drag Race, after Drag Race. I was very concerned with <laughs> how it would look and what aesthetic and vibe it would give off. I was very tired. I was very creatively bankrupt at the time. And so it was a very difficult and arduous design process. I think at first I had these kind of like big, parachute pants that would be like made of leather or suede or something, orange and elfy and armory. For this promo, to be so honest, when I first started designing it, I was lost. I was in a sea of military chic and I did not know what to do. But what I did know, the second that I saw the theme, I had a vision of this headpiece in my head. I don't know why, there's absolutely no inspiration. It's not a bird, it's not supposed to look like horns. I guess, I mean, obviously it does look like horns, but I don't know, I was in a feather era and I just thought it would be cool to have kind of like an iconic shape on my head. And so this right here was kind of the very first thing that I designed and so every iteration of the design had this headpiece in it in some capacity. I, I wanted that movement, I wanted that big shape as well because it's a promo and you want to stand out and you want to like look unique and cool, you know, you know? I knew I wanted to do ginger hair because greens and browns and blacks just looks great with a little pop of orange. I also toyed for a long time with, did I want to do green skin or orange skin or just a neutral skin tone? Cause you know, Dawn is very much about the like, the colors of the rainbow. And so I wanted to bring that to my promo look, but this theme just didn't really call for it. Let's start here with who made them, how they made them, what textures and materials you wanted to go for. So first, this headpiece was made by someone in Philadelphia named Edith Wiggles and Giggles on Instagram. When we were getting ready for the promo, I didn't know how to bring this horn headpiece to life and I was just talking to Safira about it and so she suggested Edith because she 3D prints and she can sand it and make it look all shiny and amazing. These feathers are actually removable. <laughs> so it's just a feather. So anyone wondering how I traveled with it, I just shoved it in a suitcase with some bubble wrap. The way that it attaches to the hair is just like a pageant crown. So it has these kind of like holes and then you just pin into the hair through these holes. So it stays nice and snug on the head. I don't think I'll ever be performing in this because it's a little bit too delicate and I don't want to ruin it. This wig is a ginger human with additional tracks sewn in. So it has this gorgeous dimension of really, really kind of like strawberry blonde almost. And then this deep, deep, ready orange. It was braided with charms and everything in it, but uh, it's not optimal for performance, so I took them out. This was made by a queen in Brooklyn named Nothing. That is it's N-X-T-H-I-N-G on Instagram. And they turned it out fiercely. Let's get into all of the pieces of this garment, okay? We have them over here, and I'm gonna go through one by one and just talk about them and what I like about them and why they exist. Let's get this out. I made a point when I had this made that I wanted it to be a standalone bodysuit so that after I could perform in it and not have to worry about pants and straps and all of that. So I can just throw this on with a thigh high boot and call it good, call it done. The main inspiration here was just serving cunt and looking fierce and staying within the color palette. I wanted to give a kind of boned silhouette. There's no actual boning in here, but I wanted to kind of 
show the curves of my drag body because I think it's sickening and I want it to look sickening. So the person who made this whole portion of the garment is someone named Pieretta here in Brooklyn. They are black and white striped on Instagram. Sickening, sickening, sickening costume maker and one of my favorite people to work with. Thank you, Pieretta. And so we had a lot of fun with this, picking fabrics. You know, the, the military chic, the power fabrics of it all, right? I was very hesitant with it because it's not really in my wheelhouse but I wanted to have some fun with the fabrics. I like patterns, I like animal print, I like kind of textures that you don't usually see in drag costumes. So I immediately was drawn to this kind of like olive green corduroy. I wanted to use that for the whole bodysuit, have these kind of like a khaki, like what like a military pants would be made out of for the boning to kind of break up the silhouette. And then one of my favorite pieces about this whole garment is that <laughs> me and Pieretta, obviously the part of the theme was like camo and <laughs> we really hate camo but we thought it would be kind of silly to like sneak in maybe like the ugliest piece of camo fabric that you've ever seen because why not? So all of the lining here, like all of this edging right here around the neckline and the pants is all um, like a sparkly camo fabric, which we just thought was hilarious. It's kind of like a little <laughs> joke just for ourselves. I definitely, I love asymmetry, which is why I did the one big shoulder, one little shoulder, pop of metal. And then here in the sleeve is when we kind of start getting into the, the kooky dawn of it all. So we have zebra straps. The armor detailing here is all snake or alligator. It's not real, obviously, it's just plastic. And then as we get into the fingers, I really wanted some asymmetry, like I was saying. So on every single finger, there's different jewelry. This hand is gloved, the other hand isn't. I just bought a ton of like various cool rings. This one is shaped like a nail, which I thought was pretty. So that's fun. Fun fact about this, I actually wore this to a gig last week and literally I was walking out the door and I'm putting the cap on my glue, on my spirit gum. And as I'm putting the lid on it, I just like Farida cunt on the runway style, just all the way down the front of my outfit. So this is all just not ruined, because you can't really tell, but it's just spirit gum all over it. Here. Can you hear that? It's just hard. It's like, like, look, soft, soft, soft. It's hard. <laughs> anyway, next piece. Let's talk about these pants, okay? These Peter Pan ass pants. So here is the part that goes around the waist that has the XVI on it. I had a lot of people asking, what this is or why I did it and how I came up with it. This is simply the Roman numerals for season 16. It's 10, five, and one, so 16. And I actually, you know, I, I am a Swifty. Taylor Swift trained me in the art of hidden details with numbers. And also, I don't know if you know this, but Sasha Colby, iconically in her promo look, had XV on her headpiece. And you know, I guess winners use Roman numerals, so whatever. <laughs> The main point here was that I wanted it to be low rise. The, the thought process here was military pant shoved into a thigh high, right? Like just like a cargo, big, puffy pant shoved into a cunty boot. That was the idea, okay? So that's what we're like working with here. And that's why it cuts off at the thigh where a thigh high boot then comes to cover it, which is what these gorgeous pieces are. Mixing all of the fabrics that we'd used, trying to really like bring life and dimension to the piece that we were we were creating. This is this is for a photo. You know, this is for consumers. This is for audiences and fans, right? Like we wanted to create something that would be vi as visually striking as possible, given the theme, as well as pussy and fashionable. So this is the this is a, a boot cover. Appeared to do this really smart thing where she put boning all the way up the front so that it would like stay high up, which is very smart. The night before the promo was very stressful. I was, you know, with my girls and my sisters and so it was pretty fun, I guess you could say. It was also like the night before the most important day of my life, so I was a little stressed out. But what I did that night was I bought a ton of these just silver charms on Amazon and I basically just spent all night just attaching them to like every single piece of the garment. 
It's on the straps, it's on the pocket. I think that the only piece that doesn't have any actually is this bodysuit. This little shawl, I'm a layers diva, but this is just like completely done over with charms. It's, it's a really simple detail. I really liked the way that they added dimension and movement. One other thing about this shawl that I love, maybe like a hidden detail, is that this is not just a sleeve. I went to Pieretta and I said, baby, can you put some finger holes in the sleeve? I just think it's so silly and sickening. It's like a sleeve, but it's a glove. I don't know. Something extra to the piece that I felt like was a little getting lost in the mud of green and green and brown. It's eclectic, it's silly. Like this one's a dolphin and this one's a bumblebee. What I will say is as I was getting this together, I was so, so delusionally intentional about where I put all the little charms. Before I glued any on, I went through all of the charms and I picked all the ones I liked and the ones I didn't like. And so then I like laid them out and I kind of had hierarchy of like, okay, front pocket is a very prime time spot, right? Whereas like random strap is not. Dolphin, I don't care about, it's a dolphin. That doesn't really fit with the look, but it's cute. So it goes there, I guess. And then, oh, actually that reminds me, that reminds me. So this right here is my necklace. And this baby, if you made it on this necklace, prime time charm. These were my favorites. Sickening key, snake. I'm a reputation girly, always. The moon. Front and center, baby. That is not an accident. Mm. I thought the turtle was so cute. I just love it. I just love it. it. It's an elite group of charms, right? It's an elite, elite group. So, like I said, this was all made by Pieretta, black and white striped, designed by me. It was very much a collaborative process and I'm so grateful to Pieretta for actually putting it together. The last part of this garment that I wanted to talk about, all these straps. Baby, if I don't love a strappy leg, Ugh, oh, a strappy leg. Uh, just was like trying to inject more texture and more patterns. And I was trying to figure out how to do that. And so I figured like, kind of wanted the cinched waist and kind of tight upper half with something like baggy and cool underneath. Let's not go pretty, let's not go glamorous. Let's go for something cool and kind of edgier. The straps just seemed like a great way to add some extra patterns, extra movement. It allowed me to bring in a lot of the zebra print, which is, my whole brand, my whole life is zebra print. Also has charms. But anyway, enough of that. I really just wanted to like look pussy and edgy and like have my brand be represented. And I think I did that well. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm so glad that this is like how I get to be represented for the rest of my life. Now I have some questions that I'd like to answer from the audience about the look and about just me in general because Hi, nice to meet you. Okay, so, questions. Is there anything about the outfit that I wish that I could change? Yes and no. I think the only thing that I would change, no, just kidding, there's nothing that I would change about it. I love this outfit, it's perfect. Do I make all my pieces myself? So, yes and no. Before I got on Drag Race, I 100% did. Every single thing that I wore ever was made by me, designed by me, down the whole way. Now, Drag Race is a lot to get ready for and it's very overwhelming. And so while getting ready for the show, I did kind of not make everything. Really wanted to make sure that I was going in not burnt out and with the best package that I could have. And I know that other people could make things better than I could. How do I choose my accessories? Always feel like I will look gawky and gaudy. Look gawky and gaudy. How did I get my first few gigs? How did I get started in the drag scene? I went to open sets in Brooklyn and I made friends and I went every single week and then the friends that I made started booking me and then the friends that I didn't know yet started booking me because they started seeing me around and then it just kind of snowballs from there. Favorite Taylor Swift song and album. My favorite Taylor Swift song is Clean and my favorite Taylor Swift album is Reputation. Reference points and inspiration for me comes a lot from fantasy, video games, a lot of Pokemon. like. I think that there's something about the character design in Pokemon where every single person that you meet has such a recognizable silhouette and aesthetic. And so I really like to do that with my own looks where it's always going to look like Dawn, but I really like to play with like different variations of myself to create something unique. What was my reaction to getting on Drag Race? I'm going to insert the clip here. Hi, yeah, I'm good.
<laughs> you see in a second. <laughs> or here. Thank you so much. Bye. What? Oh my god! god. <laughs> Or just play it. Can you guys sleep for a second? <laughs> I cried a lot. I feel so pussy merch. It is coming. Or it's already out. I don't know when this is gonna get released, but it's coming. I promise. Was your aesthetic always Miss Ethereal Elf Goddess or was there a lot of experimenting? There's definitely a lot of experimenting. I definitely have always been kooky. I hate that word. I hate saying kooky. I definitely have always felt um, out of the box, I guess. Paint your face blue and wear strange hair, you know, I don't know. There's definitely a lot of experimentation. I think even now I'm still experimenting. Like, I guess I am kind of in a very like elf phase right now, but I also go between Elven and alien and aquatic maybe. Dawn is an ever-changing, ever-flowing entity. She's never the same. There's many of her. I think of Dawn like I think of Yoshi. Like there is like a main Yoshi that exists in the in the universe, right? And that's Yoshi. But then there's also an entire species of Yoshi that live in Yoshi's Island, right? So to me, like, I'm the main Dawn, but there is an entire species of Dawn. I think that they're from a place called the Valley of the Dawns. And there's Aquatic Dawn, Space Dawn, there's Winter Dawn, Fashion Dawn, you know, there's there's millions of us. Who knows where I'll go next? I don't know, we'll see. What is my style and aesthetic out of drag? I am definitely like big sweater twink vibes. Every once in a while I'll go to the club and like maybe look like a slut, I guess. But I like comfy clothes. I like layering and mixing. I'm very similar to how I am in drag, just like a bit more subdued. I like hats. I like cuffed jeans and tattered shoes. It's my vibe. Everything I own is stained also, because I'm a mess. Ask Amanda, she has a great story about it. See, every, every single thing that I own is stained. And I'm okay with that. I think it adds character. <laughs> Who is my favorite past Drag Race contestant? Sasha Velour. How many changes did you make before coming up with the current design? Too many. Lots. I actually had a whole meltdown about it and then I called Saphir to ask her what I should do and she said, anything you do is going to be sickening because you're a star. And then I did this, because I'm a star. <laughs> I love my mother. How long did the headpiece take to make? I don't know, because I didn't make it. Who did I know going into the season? I think that the only person I knew personally was Tsunami. And we had only met maybe once or twice, but I loved her vibe already. And the only thing I knew about her was that she had requested to follow my alt, but I knew that she was on the season, so I was scared to let her in. Um, <laughs> I'd also met Plasma once, and I thought that she was the most annoying person I'd ever fucking met. So those are all of the questions that I screenshotted, but I kind of want to do a quick fire round. What colors do I avoid when di designing? Usually yellow. I don't really like working with yellow or green, but like pinks, reds, oranges, I love. Blue, I love. Common theme for my look, cinched waist, long fingers, puffy pant, high heel, always a high heel. Big seven incher. What's it like being pussies? Amazing. When did I choose to be gay? I came out on January 17th, 2017. What does the mood board process look like? Honestly, for this one, it was my iPad, 2 a.m. and tears. Promos filmed in LA. Who is my favorite season 16 sister? I don't have a favorite, but I will say that right the second I'm probably closest with Saphir and Amanda. And Plasma, I love Plasma. Least favorite kind of feather, chicken. What would you do if when you okay said he yes would go? And I've always said that. How come I decided to add horns? They look great. I actually, what's funny is I said I'm in a feather era and I used to be in a horn era. I haven't worn horns in a while, but I do really love to like, add this animalistic quality to my drag. I'm not a furry, but I think that there is like a whole realm of the natural world that we can pull from that is really interesting. I've yet to get into like plants. I've been more animal based, but like I think getting into like a whole kind of like mushroom, fungal, flower aesthetic would be kind of cool. I'm not there yet. What is my favorite movie? Everything ever all at once. How old am I? 25. What's my sign? I'm an Aries. What's my favorite thing about myself? Probably my outlook on life. I think I'm pretty positive about things. I like that. What is my favorite word? Cunt. <laughs> probably fuck. What was your makeup journey? No. Top three Rue girls, Sasha Velour, Aja, and Crystal Method. How many times did I audition for Drag Race? Once. Did I know the mug was going to be blown up behind me? No. And thank God it looked good. <laughs> Who won the season? Guess you'll have to tune in and see. Is there a reason I chose Drag Race over Dragula? Yeah. I 
I never considered Dragula. I'm not scary or spooky in the slightest. I'm like slightly alternative in general, which I don't think means that I have to be on Dragula. Um, no, that show is not for me at all. Can I do a makeup tutorial? I should. Right? Can we do that? Okay, we'll do that. How has your aesthetic changed as you've gotten more expensive? Oh, that's a good question. I think that I just kind of dabble in more of like feathers and ostrich and jewels and stuff. I think the aesthetic in general is pretty the same, just a bit more opulent, which I think is fun. Did I have any plans while filming to be one of the Queens of Fanbase members? No, I, while filming, I was fully just vibing fucking around, having fun. I hope that they remember me. I think I'm kind of fun and silly. I don't know. Confessional sweaters details. I got that at a thrift store in Brooklyn and it's my favorite sweater and that's why I wore it. How uncomfortable are the elf ears? Not at all. They're just spirit gummed onto my ear. Pronouns out of drag, he, him is cool. I don't really identify as cis, I guess, but I also don't use they, them pronouns because it seems like not for me. But like, I don't identify as a man but also he him is fine. When is my birthday? April 8th. Fave song to lip sync to right now is probably Toxic by Britney Spears. It's just so fun. And Get Him Back, Olivia Rodrigo. I did that for the first time last week and it was fun. Okay, so I've walked you through to talk about my drag. I love to talk about where my drag comes from and why I do the things that I do. All of it is not that deep. I love to have fun with my drag. I am not someone who is going to have a long list of like, professional influences and high fashion runways that I pull from. Like every once in a while I will, but usually it is just whatever pops into my kooky little coconut head at a certain moment. And I just like to have fun with it. Follow me everywhere, buy a cameo if you want one. And I guess I'll see you on MTV, baby. Goodbye. <laughs>。So we get the promo theme and it's not really in my wheelhouse usually, but the very very first thing that I send to anyone at MTV is I say, "Can I do zebra print?" And they're like, "We'll get back to you because it's not exactly in the palette." Baby. <laughs>